All right, so we have that so far that the natural, the integers, and the rationals are equinumerous, so they are bijections between them, they all have the same size. On the other hand, the reals and the, the open interval 0, 1, uh, they are equinumerous too. Um, are those different? And this is very famous Cantor's diagonal argument that uh, he proved this more than 100 years ago, 130 years ago, something like that. Uh, that the reals and the integers and the natural numbers uh, have different size. So there is no bijection between the reals and the natural number. So let's do these two proofs. So first proof, let's do uh, proof of number one. So the proof goes by showing that there are no onto functions from the integers, from the natural numbers to the reals, right? So that means we're gonna take any function from the natural numbers to the reals and we're gonna show it cannot be onto. So that's why it cannot be any bijection between them. So we do, we're gonna do it as follows. So what we have to show that something is not onto, a function is not onto, we have to find an element in the image, in this case in, the, in R, that is not in the image. Oh, sorry, an element in R that is not in the image of S, right? So there is not mapped by anything. So we need to find at least one real that is not in the image. There are gonna be many, but we're gonna find just one. So how are we gonna do it? So let me list uh, an example of how this, it's just an example, just to, to get the idea of how the proof goes. So let's suppose, for instance, that F, the first few values of F look like this. Okay, so that's just an example. So what we're gonna do is define a number that is gonna be different than all these numbers, like everybody in the range, in the image of f. So we're gonna let this new value, let's call it, um, I don't know, r, it's gonna be zero comma, zero dot, it's gonna start with zero. And what we're gonna do later is uh, consider the, the digits in the diagonal right here and we're going to define a number that is different uh, that at each digit is different is, is different than the corresponding one so here we have a nine um, and we're going to start with putting a one so whenever it's not a one we put a one if here we have a one so we're going to put a zero here we have we don't have a one so we put a one here we have a one so we put a zero and so on and so forth. Here we have a five, so we put a zero. Okay, so we, we make sure that this digit and this digit and this digit and this digit are always different. Okay, so we're building a number that is essentially different than all the numbers in our list, right? By making sure at least it's different in at least one digit, but two, real, it's, two numbers are different in one digit one digit, they are different, okay? So if you wanna write this a bit more formally, you can define a number a sub n, it's a, num it's a natural number that's gonna be either zero or one, and it's gonna be one if the uh, nth digit of fn is not one, and it's gonna be zero otherwise. So for instance, here is a um, zero, a one, a two, a three, a four, and a three is zero because the nth digit of f three is one, but a two is one because the nth digit of f two is not one. Okay, so for a n up here, you look at the nth digit of f n and you see if it's one. If it's one, then you put a zero. If it's not one, you put a one. Right, and then you define, and then you define zero dots, and then these digits, a zero, a one, a two, so on and so forth. Okay, if you wanna be very mathematical, you can define r to be that number, but it's essentially these are, these a's are the digits of, of the number r, and they are different than all the ones then that's it. So whenever we have n, the nth digit of this number r is different than f f n. All right, so that's that's the whole point. So the nth digit of r and the nth digit of f of f, f of n are different because we just defined nth digit of r to be different than that of f of n. So that implies that r is different than f of n. That's not. This is for all. All right. So that means that. 
R is not in the range of F. Okay, so that proves our claim that F is not on to. Cool, so we cannot have an onto function. You will say, well, we just only found one, I mean, it shouldn't be the more numbers, it's just one number that is not in the, in the range. No, we just found one, but there are many more. We could have chosen so many other ways to diagonalize against all these numbers, and we would have found like millions, well, infinitely many numbers that are not in the range of uh, this function. But uh, for the proof, we just need to show that no function, no matter what function you choose, from omega to the reals, it can never be on. So that's how they have different size. And as we're going to see later, you can imagine the R and the reals have a larger size because omega is inside. So let's do a proof of uh, the second part. The second part of um, Cantor's theorem is that for every set, uh, A and its power set have different size. Okay? So you can never have a set having the same size as its power set. So this is going to imply that the power set always increases in size. Uh, how do we prove this? This is uh, it's an idea we saw already. This is Cantor's argument, uh, Bernard Russell's argument. Um, so the proof goes like this. So same as before, we're going to consider a function from the set A to the power set of A, and we're going to claim that F is not onto. Okay, so that again we need to find um, one set, uh, one element of the power set of A that is not in the image. Okay, so here is the definition of the set that is we're going to prove later is not in the range of this. And it's very similar to that uh, Bernard Russell paradox of the sets that don't belong to the side. We're going to take all the elements, little a, that belong to a, such that a does not belong to f of itself. Okay, so f of a is subset of a, right? It belongs, uh, f of a belongs to the power set of a. Right, so we always have uh, f of a is a subset, subset of a, and now uh, an a is an element of a. So we are asking whether uh, this one belongs to that one or not, right? And for some elements, it is going to belong. For some elements, it's not going to belong. So let b capital B be that guy and we are obtaining this uh, subset of A, right? So it's a subset of A, it belongs to the power set of A. Okay, so the claim is that uh, this is not in the range. So suppose towards a contradiction that B actually belongs to the range of, of F, okay? So uh, we're gonna get, that's why we're trying to prove it's not true, so we can assume that and get a contradiction. Okay, so what do we do? So let, if it belongs to the range, it has to be some B in A, and uh, it's probably little b, such that f of b is b, right? So it's, if it's in the range, somebody has to map to it. So what is going to be the contradiction? So the contradiction is going to come from considering the following question. Does b belong to b? Here's a question for you guys. So let's see if you can answer that question. So b belongs to b by definition of b, if and only if what? Well, we have it right here. So this is the property that somebody has to have to belong to capital B. So if uh, this is the same as b, does not belong to f of b, right? So that's exactly what the property is. Now, what is f of b? Well, that's right here. So that's uh, right here. So that's if and only if. Uh, B does not belong to B. And that's our uh, contradiction. So the contradiction came from assuming that uh, B belong to the range of F, right? So, and therefore uh, F is not ont. Okay, so you can never have an onto function from a set to its power set. So, okay, so that, that way we have a way of building uh, bigger and bigger sets, right? Because now we know that the, na the natural numbers uh, have a certain size and then the reals have a larger size and then we can take the power set of the reals that's going to be an even larger size it's going to be a set that has larger cardinality than the reals and then we can take the power set of that and that's going to 
have even larger cardinality, and then the power set of that is going to have larger cardinality and the power set of that. And we can build a whole chain of different sizes, uh, each one bigger than the previous ones. Um, and then even later in the class, we're going to see how we can, after we do this infinitely many times, we can take the union and get an even larger set. Um, so that's going to take a few weeks. All right, see you guys later.